Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is another commandment of Jesus, and I I really appreciate uh, you people who are watching these commandments of Jesus and uh, making comments. Uh, you really uh, bless my heart, and uh, and you're a real blessing to me. Uh, it makes things easier to do uh, to go through all this laborious work of doing 50 commandments. It's a laborious work. Um, so uh, we're on to a new commandment. Uh, how it's going to work is Tulu is going to say the name of the commandment. Then she's going to read the scripture passage it's taken from. Then she's going to ask Jesus 10 questions, and uh, Jesus is going to answer through me. And there will be some back and forth and commentary as we go. And when we finish the 10th question, and when Jesus is finished, we'll finish the video. Um, so God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matthew. 10 is the magic number. And welcome, Jesus. So the commandment for today is act with compassion and not prejudice towards others. And the Bible passage is Luke 10, verse 30 to 37. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him with half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to the and him and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Oh, that's powerful. So my first question, Jesus is, why do you think the priest and the liver chose to pass by the wounded man instead of helping him? Uh, there's there's a good chance that the priest and the Levite passed by him because he was a Samaritan and uh, he was from a mm. different culture and the Jewish race didn't mix with Gentiles. Uh, that's one reason. The other reason is uh, typical church folk. Uh, typical uh, religious people who uh, seem to operate out of commandments of men. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. With commandments of men, uh, uh, popular uh, things that you're meant to do that are orchestrated by a Christian teacher or someone in your church or someone who's religious, like don't uh, give to homeless people because you're supporting their habit. Um, mm. and, and that's an overall blanket statement, which uh, if it's said convincing enough, will stop uh, all the congregants, all the people who listen to that from giving to homeless people because, ah, oh, they're supporting the habit. Uh, it's fine for you to go home each night and have a couple of wines, uh, but it's not fine for an alcoholic to drink himself into a stupor because he's got a tremendous... Uh, personal pain and trauma that he's trying to blank out. It's fine for you to have a couple of wines, but it's it's not fine for him to have a whole flask. And it certainly isn't fine for you to support that. And uh, it's just uh, it's just hypocritical and judgment filled. Oh, wow. That's powerful, Jesus. Commandment of man or religion. And I could attest to that, that a commandment of man is, is somehow taking over when you're looking at the church today. A lot of the things that we do, it's not even necessarily based on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's more what our pastor has said we should do, which is very sad because each person 
is responsible for knowing God for themselves. So what you said there might be right, and Jesus, in terms of the commandment of man. I was listening to a reality show, sorry, watching rather than not listening. I was watching a reality show some few days ago. And one the reality show is that uh, love is blind. That's what the program is all about, where two couples, husband and wife, they come together without not seeing each other. They, it's just through conversations they are having through the world. And in the end, they fall in love. And there's this guy there who's a Christian. And the lady that he fell in love with, they do tend to pray together on the show, which was beautiful to see. But what he really even did that touched my heart was a few years ago, he donated sperm to a couple, a gay couple, because they couldn't give birth to children themselves. And that was really beautiful because I was thinking if I was him, I wouldn't do that because I would be thinking gay does not align with what the word of God says. So it's just so good for you to know God yourself and to know irrespective of who that person is. When someone is hot, you need to help. So thank you, Jesus. My next question is, how does the Samaritan's response to the injured man challenge our understanding of compassion in the context of prejudice and societal boundaries? Uh, so uh, the, uh, Matthew's heard it taught uh, in the past that that road was a narrow sort of road in 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 order for you to go around that body you'd have to cross over you had to do a meaningful gesture to totally avoid the person and uh that's uh the typical uh response of christians someone who talks too much everyone avoids that person no one engages in conversation uh if someone uh, comes into the church uh homeless uh they avoid the person and uh and uh try uh, not to engage with the person so um uh the church uh sadly my church sadly it's full of people who deny uh justice and deny love and compassion when it comes to other people and uh people need to learn to Accept that they're not the most important person in the world uh, and uh, the most important person in the room. Where most people do, they have like a very elevated idea of who they are. And uh, and uh, uh, in order to be compassionate, uh, you have to uh, uh, come um, from a place that uh, is... Uh, full of love and uh and you you need to exercise love in a practical way thank you jesus we need to exercise love in a practical way we need to let go of all these boundaries of of all what we've been taught our life what a christian is meant to be so a christian is to show the love of christ and people need to be able to see those love our neighbors needs to be able to see through us that we are serving God, not necessarily because we tell them I am a Christian. So, so, and that's what the Samaritan demonstrated. And that's what I've noticed that in this country, for instance, where I reside at the moment. It's like, you see a lot of people I will call Samaritans to so the people that are outside the church. They are more loving towards one another in comparison to people within the church. I remember telling someone today I work that I, I became a widow last year. And our, our reaction was like, oh, Tolu, I'm part of Samaritan um, counselors. Which I which I do do uh, sorry which I do charity for, and if you don't mind, I'm listening here. Anytime you want to talk to me, just call me and I'll be here to listen. She's not a Christian. She doesn't go to church. She just volunteers for the Samaritan, and she's willing just to be a listener here if I've got some. And that really touched my heart because it's not even within the church. This person is just outside the job world. She understand what it means to love. And those are the kind of things I'm looking for in the church of God today, which can be quite difficult sometimes to find. So the third question is, what does the Samaritan's willingness to help, despite the potential risk and cost, teach us about true compassion? Uh, so uh, many people 
uh, with a need, uh, will express that need. Uh, people uh, uh, will uh, tell you when they're short of money, uh, a heroin addict, uh, when they need a shot of heroin, has got some choices. They can break into your house. They can break into your car. Uh, they can sell their girlfriend as a prostitute. Or they can go around begging for one dollar mm -hmm. at a time, and, and so the um, the uh, Samaritan, uh, the uh, the heroin addict who begs, is is uh, like a, a a person beaten up by the side of the road, and the, the most uh, uh, approachable uh, one. Um, so uh, we should. Uh, we should express our love in action where there's a need. Uh, we should uh, supply that need. Um, of course, uh, people are so full of uh, judgment and so mm. full of uh, the doctrines of man that uh, they find any reason not to give. Uh, uh, the same is true for God. Uh, you know, God uh, doesn't uh, get given money. Uh, only 5% of the American church actually tithes. 95% of the church gives less than a tithe. Uh, so uh, they find all sorts of excuses not to give to God too. Uh, the the Christians, uh, the world would change uh, if the Christian church was uh, Christ, Christ in uh, action, not just Christ in name. Uh, so uh, the Good Samaritan parable is is an example of how to love your brother. Um, it's an extreme case, uh, a person beaten up by the side of the road, but uh, you can uh, uh, imagine a homeless person on the side of the street sleeping as the beaten up person on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see a homeless person, you can stop and engage with them, buy them a drink, buy them a, a sandwich or even give them five or ten dollars um, uh, to support them uh, and i know uh me saying that is abhorrent to you uh you probably even doubt right now that it's me speaking uh but uh, that's how i treat the brokenhearted and how you treat the brokenhearted is a measure of your heart it's a measure of what sort of person you are and that the Jews uh, started uh, this parable by saying, uh, "Who is my neighbour?" Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and and the commandment was to love God and love your neighbour. Um, and uh, they want an excuse uh, to uh, not love certain people. And uh, I made it uh, impossible. I made their neighbour someone who they normally mm -hmm. wouldn't show love to. So. Um, I basically said in this commandment, love the Gentiles, which was uh, uh, against their culture. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. We need to have our eyes for the broken hearted, a heart for the broken hearted. We need to be able to see them. We need to be able to help them. Usually, what I've experienced in the past is even when somebody is able to help you with, the, with that need, they would rather say, oh, let's pray. God is going to provide or God is going to help you, support you, going to bring somebody your way, but why not you? So what you're saying to there is Jesus, we just need to be more practical with our love and people need to be able to see your love through us irrespective of who they are, especially when they are broken at it. We need to have a compassionate heart towards them. So my, number four. My, Matthew's father had a working bee which... Uh, he wanted people in the church to come and help do construction and do some things oh. on the weekend. And he, he asked this man, can he come to the working bee? And the guy said, I'll pray about it. And he said, don't worry about praying. I've already got my answer. I love that. <laughs> you don't need to spiritualize everything. I guess, Jesus, I was like that as well before. I'll pray about that. It's just religion. It just gets into just your head. Way, and it's just a polite way of saying no. Oh, pray to God about it. So usually, do, we, do, do you even think we mean it when we say I'll pray about it? Is it just a way of us escaping? Just a polite <laughs> way of saying no. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus.
imagine seeing the uh, the uh, lady or the guy i don't know is he a guy in this samaritan story it's a guy isn't he it's a man that was lying on uh, the it's floor not, uh, 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 this is matthew speaking i'm not sure whether it's a male or female okay it wasn't identified in the bible okay no problem Number four question is, how can we identify moments in our own lives where we might be acting like the priest or Levi, turning a blind eye to those in need? Uh, so uh, this, this happens in every case. There, there could be uh, a single mother in your church who, who uh, has become a widow or a husband a divorced her. She may have two or three kids uh, that are young kids that, make noise and uh, disturb uh, the church. Uh, rather than being disturbed, you could take the time uh, to mm -hmm. uh, say to the mother, you'll take the kids out and, and play with them and spend time with them. That's one way that you could step up. But people see a need, and that's a, a pretty clear need, uh, but they just ignore it. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when uh, people... Uh, aren't like me when when uh, they aren't mm -hmm. behaving like me uh, and they don't have my character and love and compassion uh, it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't work itself out uh, with mm -hmm. acts of compassion or acts of service uh, uh, it, it's uh, uh, people shouldn't be seen as uh, Christians in name only they, they should uh, be uh, in service. So there's so many uh, doctrines of man. There's so many false teaching in the church. There's almost a false teaching for every one of my commandments. Uh, there's mm -hmm. uh, something that you ignore. Um, the, the average Christian uh, thinks that they're the good Samaritan, but uh, if it came to a homeless person, that would mean taking the homeless person off the streets uh, putting them in a rehab, uh, letting them stay at a rehab and then helping them resettle uh, into another house and get them a job. That's too much work. So uh, the average Christian uh, doesn't even stop and say hello to a homeless person or buy them a drink or get them a sandwich. And that's much less than actually taking them off the street and rehabilitating mm -hmm. them. So... Um, Everyone, uh, nearly everyone, 99% of Christians are priests and Levites. They just ignore yeah. the needs of oh, the wow. brokenhearted. Oh, wow, 99%. It's in, of it's, in the, it's in the parable for a reason, but people don't realise that they actually are those people. They, uh, mm. they, they, you, you'll hear this uh, parable preached uh, in a church, but they'll never identify the people like how it ha how many of you actually stop and engage and talk to a homeless person and buy them a sandwich or a drink or give them money? Uh, if you're not doing that, you're a priest or a Levite. Mm, that's deep. If you're not doing that, you're a priest or Levite. And I've heard this being preached in the church, at least, if not multiple times, once. But I don't think I ever thought I could be a priest or Levite in those moments. But that is absolutely true because... People people assume because they're a Christian that they're the Good Samaritan, but uh, the, the character that represents Christians in this parable is the priest and the Levite. Uh, but mm. Christians think that they're a Good Samaritan, but they're not, you know. Christians think they got their life founded on the rock uh, because of a misunderstanding that Jesus Christ is the rock. Uh, mm. or the fact that he's the Messiah is the rock. Uh, but the rock is uh, understanding what I teach and applying it mm. to your life and living by it. That's living your uh, life on the rock. And so it's just a misunderstanding. People misunderstand and think they're Samaritans when 99% uh, of Christians are uh, priests and Levites. Mm. It's so interesting how deceived we are. Christians, because there's so many things that we think we are that we are not. And through these conversations, through these parables, through these commandments, it's just being laid bare to me. 
that actually these are things that we think we are, that we know, we think we are loving. Well, we're not loving in the real sense. You think you are the ones going to heaven, but not necessarily. There are other people from other religions that are going to heaven. You think you're better because you are in the church, you are the priest, you are the liver, but not necessarily. The Samaritan has got so much love, love in them than you. So what's the point of being a Christian? Then? What's the point of going to church? What is the point? It's, you know, uh, in Revelation, uh, it, it was mentioned, the syn synagogue of, of Satan was mentioned. Wow. You know, I know those of the syn synagogue of Satan um, who say they are Jews but are not. Uh, who was I referring to as the synagogue of Satan? Um, I guess the Christians or the Jews it's, of it's the just a question for people to ponder. Man, oh well, I'll skip to uh, number you six. You know, uh, if if your neighbours that you met that are non Christians met in a place once a week for tea and coffee, that that would be a nice place to go to. It wouldn't hmm. be a place of judgment. It'd be a place you'd look forward to going to. Why can't church be like that and not full of religious rude people? Hmm. Oh. I, that's beautiful, Jesus. I guess the rude people, or sorry, the act of being rude comes from the fact that we think we are the special one. It comes from arrogance. We think we are knowledgeable. We think we know God. We think we're born again. We think we're reading the Bible. We're doing all the things that the Bible requires us to do. Apart from love, we're so good at judging people, but apart from love, we discriminate. We our love is not unconditioned, it's conditional based on if you do this, if you come to church every Sunday, if you do that, then we'll love you. But if you don't do all of these things, then you don't belong here. See you later. That's how I see Christianity today. So number six question I've got is in what way can we confront our own prejudice to better serve others in need, following the example of the good Samaritan? Uh, the best way to uh, develop a place where you're not prejudiced uh, would be uh, to uh, meditate on uh, these commandments of Jesus and the parables of, of Jesus, uh, my, my parables and my commandments, and start to live a life based on that, and uh, you'll start to uh, develop my character. Um, I've Matthew's got a book called Jesus Speaking Today, uh, which uh, which would help you. Um, uh, Matthew's got a book called um, Finding Intimacy with Jesus Made Simple. Uh, there's a book by uh, Sarah Young called Jesus Calling. Uh, once you mm. understand my heart and get a good understanding of who I am, uh, it's mm. easier to conform into my image. Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely. And I guess because we don't know who you are, what your heart is, sometimes it's very difficult to know that this is what is expected of us to do. For me now, what, what really encourages me to continue to live or to continue to be here is that my life is not my home. It belongs to God. And I need to always think about living for others, not living for myself. And when you think about that, then that gives you more hope. It gives you a purpose to be here. Matthew is here today because his brother encouraged him. Why don't you live for other people instead of thinking of yourself? And when you look at the blessing that you can add to people, then you find a reason to live. And I totally agree with that perspective that when you're living just to be a blessing to people around you, then that gives you a more purposeful reason for you to still be here so thank you jesus number seven is how does this parable redefine our understanding of neighborly love particularly in a world that is filled with division and prejudice today well this parable is an example it's an extreme example of how to love your neighbor and who your neighbor is uh your neighbor is anyone who is in need uh, now, now, so many people can look through a crowd and not see the brokenhearted. Uh, they can mm. uh, look through a room and spend time in a room 
and not see the people that are needy or, or not recognise needs. Some people are so into themselves and so divorced from love that they don't see needs. They just ignore needs. Um, one example is uh, Matthew is uh, pretty much uh, attracted to uh, young, pretty women. And so uh, a woman uh, his age uh, who, who isn't particularly attractive uh, he does. She doesn't even get seen by Matthew. Matthew doesn't even mm -hmm. remember seeing her. Uh, the same can uh, be true. Uh, well, Mary Magdalene uh, said to Matthew one time, uh, uh, I, "I know you're attracted to young, pretty women, but you're also attracted to the brokenhearted, uh, mm. even more so." And so Matthew can see someone dressed uh, in a way uh, that they they might be homeless and. He he met he tries to make an opportunity to, to engage with them, um, mm -hmm. but uh, just like Matthew can see the homeless or doesn't see uh, the uh, unattractive uh, older woman, um, mm. you you can uh, be a person who just doesn't see needs, just doesn't recognise anyone with needs. You can be off in your own world. Uh, which I imagine the elite are or the middle class, which are like churchgoers who've got expensive houses and expensive uh, cars and expensive brand name clothes and stuff. You don't see a single mother who's struggling with an alcoholic husband. Uh, you don't see the broken hearted in your church, even though they exist. Um, and uh, it'd be very hard for you to be a good Samaritan uh, because you're the priest and the Levite. You just mm -hmm. you just uh, avoid um, uh, spending time or even talking to people without need. Mm, thank you, Jesus. You've answered the rest of the questions I've got here. So thank you. That's my last question. I'm really blessed by this, actually, Jesus. I, I want uh, people to recognize this as as a real commandment uh basically uh uh you can sum up this commandment is uh by saying um love everyone without condition don't mm. have a prerequisite on your love uh whenever a person has a need uh, be be someone who supports that need if you everyone uh knows a person who talks a lot who doesn't let you get a word in edgewise. It doesn't uh, even comment on a comment you make on what they say. They just talk at you, not with you. Those mm. people are desperately lonely. And when someone engages with them, they just talk and talk and talk. They get really excited. Um, take half an hour out of your week each week and engage with that person. Be, be me to that person. Uh, give them someone to look forward to so each time they come to church and they see you they know that they can actually speak to someone and uh you'd be surprised that they'd call you a good friend of theirs um mm. and uh you know after about 10 or 20 times you may be able to say you know you'd be easier to listen to if you allowed me to speak from time to time um i, I suggest on our next conversation you let me speak a couple of times um and uh and you could slowly work on that person but this is how you are to me mm. you're this person that talks and talks and talks and doesn't let me speak and you're mm. all like that all of you you're all like that but i've never told you that up until this point but that's what you are you, you just talk your head off at me and you don't let me speak. And that's if if they're annoying people, how, how do you think you are to me? Uh, you know, so many of you don't qualify as uh, a sheep in the sheep and the goats parable. So many of you don't qualify, but I still talk to you. I still love you. I still give you my presence. I still give you the time of day. Uh, so... I'm not like the priest and the Levite, and uh, it's best that uh, you conform and change your life that you're not like it either. Thank you, Jesus. That's powerful. Thank you.
Okay, so uh, if you listen to this uh, commandment, uh, please like it. Uh, if you've got a comment, uh, the regular commenters, I'd, uh, I'd uh, really appreciate your comment. Uh, this uh, uh, commandment is part of a playlist called The 50 Commandments of Jesus that's uh, on my YouTube channel. You can watch them. Uh, if uh, this is the first video of mine you've seen, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. God bless.